हरे कृष्ण जय राधा माधव जब जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जनावल लभा गिरी बरधारी यशोदनंदना व्रज जन रंजना यशोदनंदना व्रज जन रंजना यमुना तीरा यमुना तेरा वनचारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय जय प्रभुपाद 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 मेरा गौर हरिबोल हरिबोल हरे बोल हरे बोल
ಸ್ಮಿತಾಯ ಗೌರ ಪ್ರೇಮಾನಂದೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿನಾಂ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನಂ ಕಿ ಗ್ರಂಥರಾಜ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕಿ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಕಿ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂಚ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವೀಂ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೋ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇತ್ ನಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಾಯೇಶ್ವಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತ್ಯುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಠಿಕಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕೀ ನಂದನಾಯ ನಂದಗೋಪಕುಮಾರ ಗೋವಿಂದಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಓಮ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಾಂಧಸ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರೂನ್ ಮಿಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹಿಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದ ಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ ವಿತಂ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪದ ಸಹಗಣ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ ವಿತಾಂಶ ನಮಾ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣೀ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದಾನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮನೆ ಗೌರತ್ವಿಷೇ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನೋ ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯೆ ವಾಂಛಕಲ್ಪತರೂಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿತ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಸರ್ವಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಾಬ್ಧಿ ಪೀಯೂಷ ಸರ್ವ ವೇದೈಕ ಸತ್ಫಲ ಸರ್ವ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ರತ್ನಾಢ್ಯ ಸರ್ವ ಲೋಕೈಕ ದೃಕ್ಪ್ರದ ಸರ್ವ ಭಾಗವತ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ಪ್ರಭೋ ಕಲಿಧ್ವಾಂತೋದಿತಾದಿತ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪರಿವರ್ತಿತ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಪಾಠಾಯ ಪ್ರೇಮವರ್ಷಕ್ಷರಾಯತೆ ಸರ್ವದಾ ಸರ್ವ ಸೇವ್ಯಾಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಮೇ ಮದೇಕ ಬಂಧೋ ಮತ್ ಸಂಗಿನ್ ಮದ್ಗುರೋ ಮನ್ ಮಹಾಧನ ಮನ್ನಿಸ್ತಾರಕ ಮದ್ಭಾಗ್ಯ ಮದಾನಂದ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ತೇ ಅಸಾಧು ಸಾಧು ತಾಯಿನ್ ಅತಿ ನೀಚೋಚ್ಚ ತಾರಕ ಹಾನ ಮುಂಚ ಕದಾಚಿನ್ ಮಾಂ ಪ್ರೇಮಾರಥ ಕಂಠಯೋ ಸ್ಫುರ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ್ ಮಹಾಪುರಾಣ ಕಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಇನ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕುಮಾರಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಟಿಲ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ರಿ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ವಿಸರ್ಗ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ದಟ್ ಹೌ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಜಿ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ದ ಅಜ್ಞಾನ ವೃತ್ತೀಸ್ ರೈಟ್ avidya smita rag dvesh abhinivesh all of that and then in order to counteract avidya vrittis he also created 
jnana vrittis which are personified by four kumaras right so he asked them to create progeny which they denied so brahma ji got very furious angry and from his in between his eyebrows came out rudra and then uh, rudra we know that there are 11 expansions i mean rudra and 10 expansions total together 11 of them so they were offered the places uh, which adhishthata they are of which particular sense indriya that was given to them uh, given to them by brahma ji and uh, brahma ji asked them to create but uh, rudra's creation was uh, causing others to cry <laughs> right so it was a terrible creation they started uh, doing the activities which are actually meant for annihilation right they started annihilating so that's when brahma ji stopped him and said that tapa atishtha ha uh, bhadrante uh, please you perform the penance and then yatha purvam srashta then you will be able to create like before so we saw that meaning of that it means that he will be able to destroy like he has done in previous kalpas uh, yatha purvam srashta vishwanath chakravarti gave different meanings to that so now from there we proceed so today we will complete try to complete this chapter so what i'll do is now i'll go from text 21 almost up to verse 37 38 and then we can stop and have some question answers text 21 adhabhidhyayatah sargam dashaputra prajatnire dashaputra bhagavat shakti yuktasya loka santana hetavah Brahma, who was empowered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, thought of generating living entities and begot ten sons from the extension of the generations. Right. So Brahmaji understood that it was not possible that Rudra uh, would be engaged in creation. So, you know, he was having this task of creation and then uh, meditating on this, that... Uh, okay, the creation has to happen, the progeny has to be brought forth. So while meditating in this manner, he begot 10 sons. Huh? So they came from different parts of his body. That will be explained. Dasha Putra Prajatnire. Huh? So very famous Prajapatis. Of course, Narad Muni is also one of them, so who is not a Prajapati. But the famous ones, Marichi, huh? Angira, and Bhrugu, and all of them. So they were born Dashaputra Prajadnire Bhagavad Shakti Yuktasya. So they are all empowered with the potency of Supreme Lord for uh, creation, for uh, bringing forth progeny. Loka Santana Hetavah. Huh? Santana means expansion, generation, proper translates. So Loka Santan Keli, huh? meaning to increase the population of this world, expansion of this world. These are the causes. These nine personalities are the cause. Hetavah. Uh, they are the Hetu. Like that. Okay. So who are they? Text 22. Maricher Atri Angirasau Ulatsya Pulaha Kratuhu Bhrugur Vasishto Dakshascha Bhrugur Vasishto Dakshascha Dashamas Tatra Naradaha Dashamas Tatra Naradaha Marichi, Atri, Angira, Pulastya, Pulaha, Kratu, Bhrugu, Vashishta, Daksha, and the tenth son, Narada, were thus born. Right. So these are those ten sons uh, which are born from Brahma. And uh, in this, apart from Narada, the others, they signify or personify Karma Yoga. Uh, karma Yoga, Syavir Bhav Rupena. And these are actually karma yoga, uh, show the karma yoga aspect. So they are devotees, but they have this aspect of karma, which is prominently there in them. So they can be seen to be also karma mishra uh, in their bhakti, like Vashishta and all of them, or Bhrugu and all. So uh, for the path of uh, showing the path of karma yoga, these personalities were. Uh, uh, manifested and Narad Muni is actually showing the path of pure bhakti. Uh, so in this way, 
sages, these sages, nine sages are showing uh, the karma aspect. Kumaras are showing the jnana aspect and Narad Muni is showing the pure bhakti aspect in this way. So Prabhupada also uh, brings forth uh, these points in his purport. First, he talks about how Brahma created Rudra to help him in creation, but that was not to happen. So, uh, because that was not the task of Rudra. So then Brahma created another set of good children, Prabhupada says, huh? these, who are these 10, who are mostly in favor of worldly fruitive activities. Huh? So that is that aspect of karma. Srila uh, Vishwanath Chakravati speaks about it, that Prabhupada is also highlighting. He knew very well, however, that without devotional service to the Lord, there is hardly any benefit for the conditioned souls. And therefore, he at last created his worthy son, Narada, who is the supreme spiritual master of all transcendentalists. So Narada Muni being created in the end, 10th, it is showing that actually uh, the real fruit of all this uh, karma aspect or jnana aspect shown by Kumaras is final. The real fruit is bhakti, which is demonstrated by, which is personi personified by Narad Muni. Huh? Narad Muni's bhakti shakti's incarnation. Huh? Kumaras are jnana shakti's incarnation. Shakti Avesh. So uh, the point of putting Narad Muni in the end or Narad Muni being manifested in the end to show that Bhakti is Palarupa. Bhakti is actually the fruit of all these paths, meaning final destination. Huh? So three adjectives Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has used for Bhakti, which Prabhupada has translated them in various sentences. Bhakti is Nirapeksha, Bhakti is Sarva Faladatri, and Bhakti is Falarupa. Huh? Bhakti is Nirapeksha means Bhakti doesn't depend on anything else. She is independent. Bhakti is Sarva Faladatri, but the other paths depend on her, you know. So to other paths, for the other paths to get the benefit, Bhakti is needed. Uh, so that is Sarva Faladatri. And second, uh, the third one is Swayam Fala Rupa. And she is actually finally the object of, you know, all the paths. That's, that's the topmost object. Uh, that is the Param Dharma. If somebody is following Karma Yoga or for that matter, Jnana or all these paths, they should finally lead to the Bhakti. So if you see Prabhupada in purport has translated these phrases only in terms of different sentences uh, like that. He knew very well, Prabhupada says, however, that without devotional service to the Lord, there is hardly any benefit for conditioned souls uh, like that. So that is without devotional service, the other paths will not generate any fruit. Sarva uh, Faladatri, that's the point. Without devotional service to the Lord, what cannot make any uh, progress in any department of activity. Bhakti is always independent of anything material, that is Nirapeksha. So in this way, those activity, those qualities of Bhakti have been glorified. And that's how Narad Muni is considered the highest among all the sons of Brahma, compared to all of all other sons. Okay, so who was born from which part, uh, bodily part of Brahma that is spoken now? Utsangat Narado Jatnye. Dakshong Goshtat Swayam Bhuvaha Pranad Vasishtaha Sanjato Jugustvachi Karat Kratuhu Narada was born from the deliberation of Brahma, which is the best part of the body. Vasishta was born from his breathing. Daksha was Daksha from Atham, Rugu from his touch, and Krutu from his hand. Yeah. So these personalities were in this way, born from various uh, limbs of Brahma. Utsangat Narado, uh, especially that is commented by Prabhupada. He was, uh, uh, Narada was born from Utsanga. Uh, so Utsanga can have different meaning. Utkrushta Sangat, iti Utsangat. So that means that he was born from the best part. So what is that Prabhupada translates as transcendental deliberation. Meaning actually Preeti Sthanat, the best part of Brahma is his heart. Uh, and from the heart or the deliberation that happens within the heart was born Narad Muni. Uh, so that is one meaning of Utsanga. But Acharyas also have given another meaning as lap. Utsanga also means lap. Utsange. Uh, 
in lab. So if somebody takes someone else in Utsanga, that is like the sign of love, great love, Preeti. So Narada was born from Brahmaji's Utsanga means that actually Narada was born with a very great affection. Preeti Sthana, meaning what? That actually Narada Muni is born uh, from, uh, from Brahmaji's heart or Brahmaji's consciousness when it is directed towards the Supreme Lord. It has the maximum love. It has maximum affection towards Supreme Lord. And in that deliberation, Narad Muni is, you know, uh, born. So similar like Kumaras also, they were born with meditation. But here, especially Utsangat is showing that also with great Preeti, huh? Brahmaji, uh, when he is, uh, he has a great preeti towards the Supreme Lord. That is what his heart is full with. And from that place, Narad Muni is born. Uh, so that is how it is special. It's the best part of the body. Uh, that way. So Prabhupada also in purport, he is saying this thing. Narada was born from best deliberation of Brahma because Narad was able to deliver the Supreme Lord to anyone he liked. Prabhupada says, uh, a pure devotee like Narad can deliver the Supreme Lord by his goodwill. Huh? He can give the Lord to anybody. Naram dadati iti Narad. Huh? So what is that Naram? So in Sanskrit, Naram means, Nara means waters. Naro apa iti prokta. Huh? Apa. Apa means waters. So that is known as Naro. Huh? So that is how Narayana word also comes. Huh? Naraha yasya ayanam asti saha narayana. One who has the waters as his abode is known as narayana. Or another meaning of nara is also jiva samoha, the totality of living entities. So jiva samoha nam yasya ashraya saha pi narayana. One who is the shelter of all the jiva samohas, meaning all the living entities. He is also known as narayana. Here, Narada, when we say, that means actually Nara is that which belongs to the Lord. Nara is Supreme Lord and Naram is that, that which is towards him or that which belongs to him. So what is that? That is actually the Phairasad, Shantadasya, Sakya, Madhuri and all. Huh? So here Naram means literally in the definition of Narada, Nara means Narada Muni is able to bestow upon somebody that transcendental relationship towards Supreme Lord. By his potency, he can bless somebody that they will be reviving their original constitutional position. Huh? So Naram here, literally it means Bhagavad Dasya Sakya Dikam. That's the meaning of Nara. And one who gives that. Bhagavad Dasya Sakya Dikam Dadati Iti Narada. That's the definition of Narada. So which Prabhupada is uh, also highlighting Nara means Supreme Lord huh? and the means who can deliver like that. Technically speaking, Nara means that which is that relationship towards uh, the Supreme Lord. So in this way, he can deliver the Supreme Lord uh, to anyone. But then Prabhupada writes very nice point. He says that he can deliver the Supreme Lord does not mean that the Lord is like a commodity that can be delivered to any person. But Narad can deliver to anyone the transcendental loving service of the Lord as a servitor, friend, parent, or lover. Uh, so this is that exact explanation of Vishwanath Chakravarti. As one may desire out of one's transcendental love for the Lord. Uh, so one has to desire it. That is the point. Narad Muni can bestow it, but then one also has to desire it. If one doesn't want it, uh, then even though Narad Muni... Uh, like to the Daksha, he wanted to give his mercy. Vishwanath Chakravarti at other place, he quotes this example. That although great souls like Narada, they want to bestow their mercy on everyone. But then still, sometimes the place is like salted, uh, salted earth. So you put any beach there, uh, saline, alkaline kind of earth, then uh, nothing will grow. So similarly, he says, sometimes it so happens that great devotees want to give the mercy but still somebody may not at least immediately take it up uh, that way. So that is the point in this way. So Lord is not like a commodity, but one also has to develop out of his own uh, free will, the transcendental service of the Supreme Lord in this way. So that's the meaning of Narada. 
ಉಲಹೋ ನಾಭಿತೋ ಜಜ್ಞೇ ಉಲತ್ಸ ಕರ್ಣಯೋರ್ ಋಷಿ ಅಂಗಿರಾ ಮುಖತೋಕ್ಷ್ಣೋತ್ರೀರ್ ಮರಿಚಿರ್ ಮನಸೋ ಭವತ್ ಉಲಸ್ತೆಯ ವಾಸ್ ಜನರೇಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಗಿರಾ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಮೌತ್ ಅತ್ರಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಐಸ್ ಮರಿಚಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪುಲಹ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ನೆವಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಎಸ್ ಸೊ ದ ಅದರ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸ್ಪೋಕನ್ ವೇರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಮರಿಚಿ ಇಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪುಲಹ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ನೆವಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ನಾವು ಫರ್ದರ್ ಮೋರ್ ದ ಬರ್ತ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಪಿಯರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಧರ್ಮ ದೀಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಧರ್ಮ ಸ್ತನಾತ್ ದಕ್ಷಿಣತೋ ಯತ್ರ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಅಧರ್ಮ ಪೃಷ್ಠತೋ ಯಸ್ಮತ್ ಮೃತ್ಯುರ್ಲೋಕ ಭಯಂಕರ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಬ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೀಟೆಡ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಅಂಡ್ ಇ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ವೇರ್ ಹಾರಿಬಲ್ ಡೆತ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎಂಟಿಟಿ ಎಸ್ ಸೊ ಧರ್ಮ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಡ್ ಸಿ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಟ್ ಧರ್ಮಾಸ್ ಅಪಿಯರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕನ್ so this is also to signify everything also has a figurative meaning vishwanath chakravarti says that this is also to signify that by the process which is personified by these sons and narad muni then the dharma is born meaning that it leads to dharma it is actually uh, it is actually it causes uh, it ends in dharma huh? so that's how dharma is born meaning either one takes to the path of karma yoga or jnana yoga or then parama dharma which is bhakti yoga uh, so one should uh, accept these paths of course in that bhakti is supreme there is no doubt about it but yeah these are all the paths which generate dharma uh, so that's how dharma stana dakshinato like that so dharma was born from the breast of brahma yatra uh, narayana swayam because lord narayana resides in the heart so it is said that dharma was also born from the heart adharma prashtato and this son called adharma he was born from the back of brahma so this adharma's progeny is later spoken in fourth canto right adharma mrsha adharmasya bharya asit mrsha and damba and all those kali also comes into that line only right so this personality adharma he was born from prashtata he was born from back yasmad mrutyu loka bhayankara and if one resorts to adharma then one will be uh, taken over by death adharma leads to death that is the point huh? like that yasmad meaning adharma causes actually death uh, one one goes on the path of destruction that is the meaning uh, by resorting to adharma like that so propad in purport says that uh, the highest dharma is bhakti uh, propad is quoting bhagavad gita and bhagavatam sarva dharman parityajya uh, or he is also quoting ahaituki apratihata he is paraphrasing those verses to show that the parama dharma is bhakti then he says this is fourth line religion in it in its perfect form is the devotional service of the lord and irreligion is just the opposite the heart is the most important part of the body whereas the back is the most neglected part <laughs> but sometimes it can give a lot of trouble <laughs> if <laughs> it is neglected <laughs> like that back <laughs> uh-huh. so back is the most neglected part heart is most important uh-huh. when one is attacked by an enemy one is apt to endure attacks from the back uh-huh. somebody attacks so then one may endure attacks from the back one may still survive Uh, but if somebody attacks the chest and especially the heart then one will be finished you know so similarly uh, it is being said that the adharma uh, it's born from the neglected part or the part which is you know i mean adharma is not desirable here it leads to mrutyu but uh, the dharma aspect uh, that is born from the chest of the brahma like that so that is the point okay text 26 ride kamo bhruva krodho lobhascha dhara dashchadad 
अस्यादवाक सिंधवो मेड्रात निर्वृति पायो रघाश्रय लस्ट एंड डिजायर बिकम मैनिफेस्टेड फ्रॉम द हार्ट ऑफ ब्रह्मा एंगर फ्रॉम बिटवीन हिज आईब्रोज ग्रीड फ्रॉम बिटवीन हिज लिप्स द पावर ऑफ स्पीकिंग फ्रॉम हिज माउथ द ओशन फ्रॉम हिज पेनिस एंड लो एंड एबोमिनेबल एक्टिविटीज फ्रॉम हिज एनस द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल सीन या सो वॉट फर्दर वॉट कॉजेस और इंस्टिगेट्स अधर्मा that is spoken now huh? this verse is describing the appearance of those qualities which instigate adharma so out of dharma and adharma adharma is focused huh? and what are the qualities that uh, you know that that are concomitant with adharma that is being spoken here huh? so lust and desire became manifested from heart of brahma ridhi kama yeah so also the kama huh? of course there is the aspect of uh, desirability and undesirability in this huh? and there is aspect of brahma ji uh, the best part of hridaya like that you know hridaya is not just one thing huh? so within antakaran also the best part has generated narada uh, and then the another part has generated dharma like that and kama is being generated from one part also in that way uh, so there is some tarathamya there also क्रोधो लोभस च अधर दक्षदात सो एंगर इज बॉर्न फ्रॉम द आईब्रोज ग्रीड फ्रॉम हिज लिप्स द पावर ऑफ स्पीच फ्रॉम हिज माउथ वाक दीज आर ऑल्सो पर्सनैलिटीज सो दे आर बॉर्न सिंधव मेड्रान देन ऑल्सो एबॉमिनेबल एक्टिविटीज पायोर अघ अघाश्रय all the vices all the sinful activities they are also born from the other uh, uh, parts like anus okay so prabhupad says uh, purport a conditioned soul is under influence of mental speculation however great one may be in the estimation of mundane education and learning he cannot be free from the influence of psychic activities therefore it is very difficult to give up lust and the desires for low activities until one is in the line of devotional service to the lord huh? so kama being born from the heart huh? or also translated as mind by some of the acharyas and just as mind is very difficult to control than the senses huh? senses may be possible to control but mind is very difficult so it signifies this point that prabhupada is saying that uh it's very difficult to control the lust one may be very learned one may be uh having great education and learning but then still the desires for sense gratification uh, especially lust is very difficult to give up uh, so that is the point of being born from uh, mind or being born from the heart which is difficult to control karmendriyas Uh, and nyan indriya is possible to control up to certain extent but mind is very very difficult uh, propa says when one is frustrated in lust and low desires anger is generated from the mind and expressed from between the eyebrows ordinary men are therefore advised to concentrate the mind by focusing on the place between the eyebrows um, bhruvor madhye whereas the devotees of the lord are already practiced to place the supreme personality of godhead on the seat of their minds So we also meditate on eyebrows, but Lord's eyebrows. Uh, while uh, a person, general, the yogi is advised to meditate between the eyebrows, trying to focus uh, this way. Then Prabhupada talks about finally power of speaking. The power of speaking is called Saraswati or the goddess of learning, and the birthplace of the goddess of learning is the mouth of Brahma. even if a man is endowed with the favor of goddess of learning it is quite possible for his heart to be full of lust and material desire and his eyebrows to display symptoms of anger so point is that one may be very learned one may have great knowledge of worldly things or even shastra but it might very well be the case that one's heart is not free from you know desires for sense gratification like that 
So that's why Prabhupada says finally, good qualifications can be expected only from a pure devotee who is always engaged in the thought of the Lord or in Samadhi with faith. So Krishna consciousness, mercy of the devotees, mercy of the Lord is required. Only uh, learning, great learning and uh, you know material qualifications will not help one, but one also has to have the mercy of devotees. Supreme Lord, then one will be able to conquer the uh, vices like lust. That is the point. Sage Kardama, husband of great devotee, was manifested from the shadow of Brahma. Thus, all became manifested from either the body or the mind of Brahma. Yes, Sankardama is also son of Brahma. So he is born from Chaya, from the shadow of Brahmaji. But although he is born from shadow, but still he is manifestation in goodness. He is not smitten by modes of passion and ignorance. So Vishnu Chakurti Thakur says that the nine sons which were described before, they have uh, in them that aspect of karma. So that's why they have in them aspect of passion and ignorance. While kardama is uh, manifested in mode of goodness. Uh, Sattva guna is very prominent in him. And somebody like Narad Muni, the transcendental goodness, Vishuddha Sattva is most prominent. Uh, so within Brahmaji's sons also, uh, that pradhanya of different modes can be seen in this way. Like, okay, so now there is another episode now here of Brahmaji uh, being attracted to Vak, that personality who produced, who was produced from his mouth. Uh, so that episode is the next episode. So we'll see that and then maybe we will stop. Text 28. Vacham duhitaram tanvim. Vayambhur haratim manaha Akamam chakamek shattaha Sakama itina shrutam Yes. O oh, Vidura, we have heard that Brahma had a daughter named Vok who was born from his body and who attracted his mind towards sex, although she was not sexually inclined towards him. Yeah. So Maitreya is speaking to Vidura, Nahashrutam, that we have heard about this. Huh? Nahashrutam. I didn't see it, but I have heard about it. That Brahmaji, Chakame, huh? he became sexually attracted to his daughter, huh? Vacham. Her name was Vak. Huh? Duhitaram Tanvim. She was very beautiful. And she was not desirous of any such uh, uh, feelings towards Brahma, but Brahmaji became attracted towards her. And we have heard this. Uh, Maitreya is saying this thing. So this verse is commented by Acharyas and Prabhupada also has commented uh, elaborately. So first and foremost that this particular episode is not happening with Chaturmukh Brahma. Okay. So this is Shri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says very clearly that uh, this episode could not have occurred after Brahma heard Chatushloki. Huh? He says that once Brahma heard Chatushloki Bhagavatam and he became a pure devotee, then uh, there was no question of him being attracted in this way. Chatushloki Bhagavat Upadesh Prapti Anantaram Etad Aghatanat, he says. Huh? This is Aghatan, ye nahi hone wala. After he has heard uh, Chatushloki. So, because Lord had also promised, you have studied that in second canto. Bhavan kalpa vikalpeshu na vimu yati karhichit. Lord said there to Brahma that you will never be bewildered in your life now again further. So, this has happened in some distant kalpa, uh, some dure kalpe. Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur says like that. Before Chatushloki was heard. Hmm? So, now Chatushloki, when was it heard? There are different opinions. Uh, one opinion Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur himself speaks is Chatushloki was heard in first day of Brahma. First year, first month, first day. Uh, 
So if that is the opinion accepted, then this incident is happening with another Brahma itself, right? You know, because if he has heard on the first day itself, then where is the question of getting attracted to walk, right? You know, because uh, Chatushluki was heard by him in the first day. But there is also opinion in other places, it is also spoken about Chatushloki being heard in the, on the later days in his life. Huh? So that's why both the things are possible. So anyhow, the point here that is to be noted is that uh, this is happening when uh, the personality who is uh, undergoing this particular thing is not a uh, pure devotee, right? You know, when Brahma became pure devotee after Chatushloki hearing, then this could not have occurred. Huh? So Prabhupada is also addressing this particular thing. Nahashatrum also shows this thing. Hmm? Nahashatrum shows that uh, uh, Nahashrutam, sorry. Nahashrutam shows that we have heard this. Huh? So nobody in the present kalpa has seen this. Huh? That is how the meaning is also brought forth. We, we have just heard about it. Uh, we haven't uh, seen this particular thing or nobody has seen in this particular kalpa, this, this thing. So why was this arranged? Huh? So first and foremost, it, it's not happening with Chaturmukha Brahma or at least it's not happening before, uh, when he has become a pure devotee. So Vishwanath Chakrati Thakur says, even if you take it that it is happening to a Brahma who is not a Chaturmukha Brahma, huh? still, there is a purpose uh, in this pastime. Uh, what is to be shown that that is what Prabhupada begins his purport with. Balvan Indriya Gramo Vidvam Samapikarshati. It is said that the senses are so mad and strong that they can bewilder even the most sensible and learned man. Therefore, it is advised that one should not indulge in living alone, even with one's mother, sister, or daughter. Matra Swastra Duhitava Na Vivikta Sono Bhavet. That is the point. Vidvam samapikarshati. Balavan indriya drama of Vidvam samapikarshati. Even the most learned also become victims of the sensuous urge. So that was the purpose for which uh, uh, this particular incident has occurred. Ati vidushan, ati viveki nam api kam jayo na bhavet. Itne vidush, itne vidwan or viveki logon ka bhi kam jay jaldi nahi hota hai. To say this to demonstrate this, this particular pastime was arranged. Huh? So sometimes Lord arranges, arranges to show some lessons through pure devotees. Sometimes he arranges to show a lesson, not necessarily through pure devotees, but also through powerful personalities. Srila Jeeva Goswami says this point in his explanation on 10th Canto, that he says that we don't have to say that Lord's arrangement involves or, uh, you know, acting under Lord's instruction is only for pure devotees. No, sometimes Lord uses mixed devotees, powerful personalities also as agents in his pastime to demonstrate a certain point, you know. So he says, he says that in the context of Putna, somebody like Putna also can be used in Lord's service in her pastime, although she is not a pure devotee. Uh, what to speak of pure devotee? She has that feeling of enmity also. So same way, uh, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur also says that uh, Brahma, Brahmaji, uh, uh, even another Brahma or Brahma who is not a pure devotee, but he is very powerful, uh, Teji Asam. So they can also be used in uh, demonstrating a certain lesson. Uh, so that's what happens with personalities like Brahma, Indra, or even like... Uh, Vishwamitra and all that. Huh? So these personalities are sometimes used to Durvasa. They are used to show a certain point by Supreme Lord. So here, uh, in this way, we can understand. So Prabhupada later says, Maitre hesitated to state this anomaly on the part of Brahma, who was sexually inclined to his own daughter. Huh? That is how Nahashrutam, that, that we have heard this. I mean, I'm not sure, but we have heard like this. Huh? Sometimes we say, no. So that sense is there, that uh, we have heard like this. Huh? So he's putting it as with somewhat doubt. Why? Because he doesn't want to be uh, embroiled like the sons of Marichi. Huh? 
when this brahma ran after vak then the sons of marichi laughed huh? the sons of marichi they laughed at brahma so because of which we know that it was an offense huh? because brahma is a very great personality even marichi himself didn't laugh all the other sons they didn't laugh but the sons of marichi laughed so that's how they were uh, later they had to come as uh, sons of uh, yeah first yes sons of kalanemi yes so that was the thing uh, they were cursed to be born as asuras and that's how they were then born as grandsons of hiranyakashipu or hiranyaksh both of them, you know in this way so when maitre is saying this he is conscious that i don't want want to be offensive like them huh? so he is saying it with a caution not with that offensive mentality absolutely he is not seeing a fault in brahma at all huh? because he knows that if i have dosha drashti towards brahma then i will also fall down like sons of marichi huh? this is the point so yeah Prabhupada uh, in that same para says this extraordinary immorality on the part of Brahma was heard to have occurred in some particular kalpa. Huh? Then he is mentioning that point of Vishwanath Chakravarti that not uh, after he has heard Chatushloki. Hmm? Finally, one should, however, take serious note of this incident. The human being is a social animal, and his unrestricted mixing with the fair sex leads to downfall. So Prabhupada is saying that it is for our uh, lesson, it is for us to learn that actually we should be extremely careful. Even the great souls, they can be victimized by uh, such mode of uh, passion and such urges. So we are very insignificant people. How much we should be careful? Kshurasya uh, dhara. It is very nishita duratyaya. It's like walking on a razor's edge. So one should be very careful. Uh, not to give in to this sort of any sort of urges uh, like that. So Maitreya cited this example on the part of Brahma just to bring out our notice to, uh, just to bring our notice this great danger. Uh. So this is how it is arranged in this fashion. Uh. It is not to have some uh, dosha drishti towards Brahma, but it is to demonstrate that power of uh, you know lust which can take away great personalities Vivek also. This is the point. Okay. Tamadharme kritamatim vilokya pitaram sutaha marichi mukhya monayo vishrambhat pratyabodhayan. Yes. First, finding their father so deluded in an act of immorality. The sages headed by Marichi, all sons of Brahma, spoke as follows with great respect. Yeah. So when the sons of Brahma, like Marichi, Angira, and Kratu, and all of them, they saw this, Vilokya Pitaram, huh? when they saw their father like this, Vishrambhat Pratyabodhayan, huh? they spoke to him with a great Vishrambha, with a great respect, huh? with a great affection and respect. Vishrambha, Vishnath Chakruti defines as Janya Janak Sambandotha Sakhyat. Uh, Janak Janya Sambandotha Sakhyat. Uh, that very affectionate uh, uh, relationship between father and son. Uh, and because of that friendliness is there, some friendliness is there towards one's father, right? Genuine friendliness out of the intimacy. Natu Papa Darshanotha Kopat. It was not because of seeing his sinful activity and because of anger. So that is the meaning of Vishrambhat. And they spoke to him with a great respect like that. Prabhupada brings in purport that why did they speak like that? Hmm? Prabhupada, second line, they knew very well that even though their father committed a mistake, there must have been some great purpose behind this show. Otherwise, such a great personality could not have committed such a mistake. It might be that Brahma wanted to warn his subordinates about human frailties in their dealings with women, which are always very dangerous for persons who are on the path of self-realization. Therefore, great personalities like Brahma, even when in the wrong, should not be neglected, huh? nor could the great sages headed by Marichi show any disrespect because of his extraordinary behavior. 
so they understood that this was uh, uh, the point that somebody like brahma he not ordinarily wouldn't behave like that uh, but this was arranged for purpose of showing a certain uh, human frailty human danger uh, to a certain things uh. so this is the point so with that vishrambha they spoke to him naitat purvai kritam tvadye na karishanti chapare yastvam duhitaram gacche anigrhyanga jam vibhu prabhu ho so oh, father this performance in which you are endeavoring to complicate yourself was never attempted by any other brahma nor by anyone else nor by you in previous kalpas nor will anyone dare to attempt it in the future you are the supreme being in the universe so how is it that you want to have a sex with your daughter and cannot control your desires yeah so brahma ji is supermost post in the universe prabhupada says and that's how he must be ideal in behavior huh? so the siddha they asked him that how nobody has done it before nobody will do such a thing so why are you behaving like this 31 teji asam api he tanna tu shlokyam jagat guru yad vrittam anuthishtan vai lokah kshemaya kalpate even though you are the most powerful being this act does not suit you because your character is followed for a spiritual Im- improvement by people in general yeah so tejya sam api etan ah huh? although you are very powerful agreed but etan na sushlokyam ah huh? etat na sushlokyam this this behavior is not suitable because jagat guru you are the spiritual master of whole universe yad vrittam anuthishthan vai and following your example only the living entities will achieve the ultimate benefit lokah kshemaya kalpate so if you only set a such a, a horrible precedent then what will happen huh? so you are very powerful we understand you may not be influenced by this uh, such an act huh? but then point is uh, you are jagat guru huh? you are you are followed your example is seen by all the followers huh? so they will uh, uh, they will not understand it they will misunderstand it so that is why you please uh, don't behave in this manner like that hmm. purport proper says it is said that a supremely powerful living entity can do anything and everything he likes and such acts do not affect him in any way for example the sun the most powerful fiery planet in the universe can evaporate water from anywhere and still remain as powerful the sun evaporates water from filthy places and yet is not infected with the quality of the filth similarly brahma remains un- impeachable in all conditions uh, brahma may not be influenced by that thing brahma still remains glorious still remains powerful in spite of such an act but still they said he you are jagat guru uh, your behavior and character should be so ideal that others can follow and derive kshema so he should not be acting in this manner right so that is the point <clears throat> the great souls although they may act in sometimes in apparently immoral way uh shila sukhdev goswami also says this in uh, ras panchadhyay that he says that dharma vyati karo drashto uh, that's the words teji asam na doshay uh, those who are powerful uh, we should not see uh, dosh in them uh, just like uh, the fire is there a uh, fire can uh, uh, gulp down everything else but of course this is for very exalted empowered chosen personalities like brahma ji uh, example shridhar swami gives examples you know it it's just it's not just applied for anybody uh, he gives example of personalities like brahma or indra or vishwamitra soma brahaspati like that he gives four five example shridhar swami there so we may see see some uh, transgression by these great personalities but it will not tejya sam api na doshay uh, that that is not a fault in them uh, that is primarily because it is to drive home a certain lesson uh, it is arranged in that particular fashion uh. actually shukdev goswami quotes this verse to 
an answer Parikshit's question where he says that, how could Lord Krishna touch other men's wives, you know, like that. So he says, Are, forget about Lord Krishna, even Tejaya Samabhi, even great powerful personalities are free from fault. So what to speak of Lord Krishna? He is, you know, he is Bhokta, he is Param Bhokta and he's, everything in this world is for his enjoyment. Huh? So from that angle, he speaks this. But Teji Asam there, what if Teji Asam api, agar inka shaktivan logon ke liye aisa bola hai, to what to speak of Supreme Lord? In that way, it is, he is answering that question. Huh? That way. So, Jeev Goswami, he speaks also that, yeah, there, that sometimes such Teji Asa, such powerful people, they are also used by Lord to drive home certain lessons this way. Huh? So, that is why we should, we don't have to see uh, faults in them. At least don't, we don't have to deride. We can take the necessary lesson, but we don't deride these personalities because they are great souls and empowered by Supreme Lord for certain tasks in this way. And so that is the point. But still, because uh, there are followers of personalities like Brahma, so they, he should not have acted in that way. That is how they are humbly submitting their plea. Okay, two more verses. Tasmaya namo bhagavate yaidam svena rochisha atmastham vyanjaya masa sadharmam patu marhati. Let us offer our respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead, who by his own effulgence, while situated in himself, has manifested this cosmos. May he also protect religion for all goodness. Yeah, so although they tried to prohibit, uh, inhibit Brahmaji, but he didn't stop. Uh, he still kept approaching uh, his daughter. So then they understood that there is no way we can set right this situation except we pray to the Supreme Lord. Uh, so that's how this prayer is to now, Supreme Lord. Tasmaya namo bhagavate yaidam svena rochisha. We offer our respectful obeisances to that Bhagavan who by his Svena Rochisha, by his self-effulgence, by his energy, Atmastham Venjayamasa, he manifested the universe which was situated within himself. Atmastham Venjayamasa, Prakashitam. He manifested the universe which was situated within himself. Sadharmam Patu Marhati. May that Supreme Lord protect this situation. May he protect this uh, religion, may he give the good sense to our father Brahma by which this forbidden act is not done uh, this way. So Prabhupada in purport highlights this also. The great sons began to pray to the Supreme Lord for good sense of Brahma uh, this way. It is only by the grace of Supreme Lord that one can be protected from allurement of lusty material desires. The Lord gives protection to devotees who are always engaged in his transcendental loving service. And by his causeless mercy, he forgives the accidental fall of a devotee. Therefore, sages like Marichi prayed for the mercy of the Lord. And their prayer was fruitful. Saitham ganatha putran puro drashtva prajapatin prajapati patistanvam patyaja vriditastada the father of all Prajapatis, Brahma, thus seeing all his Prajapati sons speaking in this way, in that way, became very much ashamed and at once gave up the body he had accepted. Later, that body appeared in all directions as a dangerous fog in darkness. Yeah. So when Brahmaji saw these putras, these sons of his in front of him, huh, begging like this, speaking, Grunadaha putran, puro drashtva, age dekkar unke, prajapati pati, that is Brahma, tanvam tatyaja, huh, he actually gave up his body. Tanvam, huh, means tanu, body. Vriditaha, because he was extremely shameful of what he had done. He came to his senses. After they prayed to the Supreme Lord, then he came to his senses. And he gave up his body. And that body was accepted by the different direction, directions. Because of which uh, the directions became marked with a great uh, fog. Uh, which causes a great darkness and fear. Jagruhu Ghoram. Like that. 
So what is the meaning that he gave up the body? Why did he give up the body? First of all, Vishwanath Chakravati says, other Acharyas also say that this was a Mahapataka. Uh, and the, the only prize chit of Mahapatak is one has to give up his body. Mahapatakasya pranantam eva prayaschittam. So there are five Mahapatakas. Manu speaks about this in Manu Smriti. So one of them is this. Guru kalpa. Guru talpaga. So meaning that uh, cohabiting with one's uh, guru's wife. So it has corollaries within it. And one of them is incest. Incestual relationship like this. You know, towards one's daughter or son or like that. So it's included in that Mahapatak. Other Mahapatakas are like Brahma Hatya. Huh? That is one Mahapatak. So like that. Five Mahapatak. Pancha Mahapatak are very famous by Manu. Like that. So because this was a Mahapatak, so Brahmaji thought that the only way is by giving up the body. Huh? This way. So, uh, but then Brahma is entitled to live for a time of Dvipararthas huh? for 100 years. So it was not possible for him to quit the material body. Uh, that was not ordained. Uh, otherwise, there will be uh, disaster in the sense that because he's, uh, he's been given this particular responsibility like that. So Brahma, he gave up the body means that he gave up that bhava. Hmm? Bhava tyaga eva tanu tyaga tvena uktaha. Vishwanath Chakravarti says. Bhava tyaga eva tanu tyaga tvena ukta. Tanu tyaga matlab yaha pe bhava tyaga. He, he just gave up that mentality. Means he completely got rid of that mentality. Just like one, the soul gets rid of a body when he leaves the body. Uh, finished that connection. Like that Brahmaji gave up that mentality. He became completely free from mentality. Uh, and that mentality manifested in terms of that fog which was accepted by the uh, devatas of Disha, devatas directions, uh, like that. They took it. So in this way. So this is how uh, Brahmaji atoned for the sin which he had done, like that. So Prabhupada addresses these ideas even in his purport. And the best way to compensate for one's sinful acts is to give up one's body. Uh, especially for such a ghastly sin like Mahapata. Of course, I mean, this is a principle, but then by devotional service, any kind of sin can be destroyed. Uh, devotional services, even Mahapatak, uh, Maha Mahapatak, whatever, Su Mahapatak, <laughs> it can destroy all kinds of sins. Uh, so Prabhupada always said that one needs to just take shelter. No matter what background one comes from, he should just take shelter of uh, uh, devotional service. And devotional service can purify one from all the kinds of sins. Uh? But this is just a Shastric principle being mentioned, not to be imitated and not to be uh, imitated in the sense like uh, giving up one's body or like that, committing some suicide or like that. Uh, that way. Prabhupada in conversation also, another conversation said that Lord Chaitanya is very merciful. Uh, so even if somebody has done great Mahapatak or like that, if he takes shelter of Lord Chaitanya, he would forgive him. Uh, provided one is ready to you know take that shelter and sin no more this way but the point here is Prabhupada says that one's duration of life blessings opulence etc is decreased by sinful acts huh? that is what is to be understood that so one should be very careful one should be very alert not to fall prey to any such things ignorance is the cause of sinful life and sinful life is the cause of gross ignorance Avidya leads to Papa and then Papa leads to, you know, Kritya also, that action also, like that, you know. The feature of ignorance is darkness or fog. Okay, so he speaks about how that fog was taken by directions. One who takes shelter of the Lord, the perpetual light has no fear of being annihilated in the darkness of fog or ignorance. So these two episodes I wanted to discuss so now we can take a break, then I can take some questions, and then the last part of this chapter will be there. Hare Krishna.
गए क्लास हरे कृष्ण सो आर देर एनी क्वेश्चन हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी दंड प्रणाम प्रभु जी हाँ यस माता जी दंड प्रभु जी अनुपम गोपी का यार प्रभु जी यू आर एक्सप्लेनिंग अबाउट ब्रह्मा सो वेन ब्रह्मा इज एट दैट पोस्ट मीन्स ही इज डेफिनेटली नॉट प्योर डिवोटी बट योर डिवोटी राइट या so and uh, one thing is prabhu ji I, i had a doubt is when brahma was uh, uh, when brahma came from garbhadakshi vishnu without any instructions he never do uh, the creation right prabhu ji yes so uh, yes. that instruction is only instruction to create or it's instruction given with chatushloki bhagavatam what we have seen in uh, you are saying in uh, verse i mean in 3.8 Eight chapter and nine chapter there, or are you talking about in general? In general, what we hear is Brahma when he is comes out of Garbha Daksha Vishnu, he was wandering, did tapasya, and then he heard Chatushtu ki Bhagavatam, and then the actually creation starts. Yeah. So now here, uh, Prabhupada mentions that this Brahma was not the Brahma who in who uh, when uh, he did hear the Chatushtu ki Bhagavatam. That's why. He was behind work. So Brahma, how to understand? Yeah, Brahma. Before creation, in every kalpa, he doesn't hear chatushloki. Not okay. every Brahma also hears chatushloki. Not every Brahma hears chatushloki. Okay, this chaturmuk Brahma was a special one who received the knowledge of chatushloki, and that's how he became a pure devotee of Lord. And there was no question of any bewilderment for him. But this doesn't happen with every Brahma. that is the point so his he he is entitled for creation but it is very well possible without hearing chatushloki also he can do creation that is no problem right that is the thing okay okay that's a mercy like hearing chatushloki was a like yeah that was a very special uh, benediction to this brahma and that's how okay. chaturmukha brahma is considered very qualified jeev uh, goswami says this in sandarbhas also this is not every brahma doesn't receive chatushloki okay okay so uh, if we are saying that this is not the same brahma means like chatushloki brahma and vak episode is not happening so like the brahma ji is 
either not of this uh, kalpa but are they are having the same uh, tensions like the marichis and all uh, or else or else uh, like the different universes uh, brahmas are also having the same name sons actually uh, this sort of yes i mean this sort of details are not given actually anywhere usually when you talk about creation this is about the universe that which we see uh, which we reside in uh, certain details are there about other uh, universes and brahmas like you know brahma has this brahma has four heads and other brahmas have more than four and some of them have even million heads and also such some indicatory details are given but if you talk about sarga and visarga it is primarily spoken for this particular universe huh? so how is the situation in other universes and all uh, that kind of very huge analysis is not there in many places you know like that but some indicatory things are there like this thing is mentioned by our acharyas also that uh, our brahma received chatushloki huh? and then he became enlightened he became a pure devotee huh? so this doesn't happen with every brahma means there are some other brahmas who proceed with the creation but they haven't heard the chatushloki that is that possibility is spoken clearly by him so like that some indications are there elaborate details these at least in my reading i haven't come across which are the like major scriptures wherever these things are spoken uh, we don't find these details about other universe no because the question arises if that if if he is not chatushloki then the other brahmas they might be having the same sons like the names are mentioned okay okay, okay. see about the sons and brahma no all of them change see after this universe is over no this brahma goes back to the spiritual world along with all the sons so if you are saying the next universe it has another set of brahma and the sons but the names are same so that's what about those such Because... details such details like what are their names and all that that is not spoken you know what are the names and all all such things but the marichi and all these in this way you can say that they are also like posts it's not that in every universe same marichi comes no even same brahma doesn't come in every universe once dviparar is over all of them go back to the spiritual world right? even the narad is also a post the same narad yeah. narad is not a post see narad comes and then narad goes to the spiritual world once this dviparar is over that's it and then that that particular incarnation of narad muni is considered gnana shakti's inca uh, bhakti shakti's incarnation whether now narad in other universes also comes and uh, he's what are are there only tensions and are these the names these details not there anywhere and uh, we heard about the saptarshis yeah they are also the sons of the brahma and out of this nine many are the saptarshis like two three yeah. atri and uh, but others names are not been mentioned correct like the bharadwaj or uh, yes. sandilya or right? that's right so who who are they now okay. so, like it is not there. yeah so saptarshis no some of these personalities do become saptarshis but usually saptarshis change with every manvantara okay saptarshis stay only for one manvantara and once that is finished the role of the set of saptarshi changes to the next manvantara so if they are personalities who are like sons of brahma and all then some of them continue like vasishta and all some of them but for for other sages like bharadwaj and all that who are uh, you know sons of these sons or grandsons or like that then these typically end with one manvantara their life span gets over and then that's how there is a set so every manvantara has six changes one of them is saptarshis huh? manvantaro manavo deva Uh, that shloka is famous that in manvantara what changes is uh, devraj indra changes manu changes manus putra change saptarshi change then also uh, the manvantara avatar changes uh, manvantara avatar also changes and devata change yeah that is the last one so these are the saptarshis so if they are occupied by these personalities yes they will stay but if they are occupied by other personalities then they will stay only for one manvantara that is the understanding clear right now project regarding this episode <coughs> like uh, 
so we also hear that ki there is no temple of brahma in india or like it is not so and the connection is given to this episode only yeah that is one thing second thing we also hear uh, that ki the, one of the consorts of brahma is vak or saraswati right so uh, and there is one more story told in this regard is that ki uh, brahma was actually one mukha and then he developed five heads yeah. seeing that and shiva got angry and he cut one of the mukhas so then he became chaturmukhi yeah so from these all things appears that is the and then again in this uh, vishnu chakra tagore in text 33 he writes there in translation ki uh, till today that is why because of this mentality fog exists till today that mm-hmm. means if fog exists in this universe this episodes appears to be of this brahma so can you clarify yeah so point is these episodes like uh, brahma uh, uh, hankering for saraswati and that's how four heads five heads came out so that is this story is in other puranas it's from other purana it's mentioned in some of the other puranas so bhagavat puran is not describing that story and uh, it is from other puranas so typically uh, you know uh, how that is dealt with is some kalpantar uh, some kalpa bhed or like that Th- that is talking about some other brahma uh, from some other universe or whatever like that but that is authentic story i mean it's there in other puranas like that so personally i haven't gone into uh, details of which manvantara it is talking about which kalpa it's talking about or like that but uh, i did see that it is there in some of the uh, other puranas so brahma ji actually vak is differentiated from saraswati huh? in bhagavatam at least so this story has multiple uh, uh, you know multiple versions yeah coming from different puranas so in one of the versions the vak only you know finally agrees to become brahma ji's consort and you know vak is only saraswati like that also one version is there puranic version here in this particular version of uh, bhagavatam the, at least the brahma that it, he is talking about that uh, that sort of thing is not there he doesn't establish any relationship with vak and because he is uh, she is her his daughter huh? like that that way and uh, so saraswati is considered consort of brahma so that is there that is also authentic you know information it is there in the puranas and all that but how that saraswati is born there are then different stories of that you know saraswati how she is born so she is born as a daughter and then she becomes a consort see because everything has to bo- has to be born from brahma right in some way or other you know so you call brahma's son brahma's daughter brahma's whatever and what role they take that is as per you know lord's arrangement in uh, in that particular way so so at least in bhagavatam this is the version which is mentioned but if you are asking saraswati being born from brahma and being accepted as his consort is that a puranic version it is puranic version it is there in the puranas like that that way finally about that fog thing so that's how uh, fog was created and it engulfs the night uh, at least in this case it means that it has it was caused by this particular episode huh? so whenever you you see that fog so yeah the root cause is uh, this particular thing brahma ji's uh, uh, transgression which has happened so based on that you have certain point yeah probably because uh, one side vishnu chakra thakur is telling that ki it, it cannot be the same brahma because he heard the chatushloki in the first day itself no so that's what i'm saying that is one version yeah that is one version yeah right and then in another version the chatushloki is also spoken uh, later yeah is said to be spoken later so if we accept that then i understand your question is why some another brahma's fog should be here in this particular universe <laughs> staying till and, the end and, right and there is no temple yeah. of brahma like, like that. this all story is yeah, to be here i like. understand yes that is agreed uh, <laughs> but then that's what you know you actually many of these things are spoken in so many different versions and all that it is sometimes difficult to reconcile i mean you have some definition see there is one principle jeeva swami speaks let us bhedopi ekavat varnitam huh? this also is one principle it is coming now what it does it takes multiple versions and speaks at one place bhagavatam or many other puranas like you know neel varaha is uh, shweta varaha is there and the neel varaha is there you are talking about shweta varaha story suddenly you get into neel varaha story without telling that i am now talking about neel varaha 
यू नो सो भेदो भी एकवत वर्णन भेद है लेकिन उसको एक जैसा बोल दिया दैट वे सो दैट टाइम आचार्य से कौन प्लीज दिस इज श्वेत this is this happened in swayam bhu manvantar this in chakshush manvantar so please understand these are two different stories that way so same way this creation related things also or such things are sometimes bhedopi ekvat varnan uh, so to the degree those uh, ideas clarity has been given we can speak to that degree uh, but sometimes the whole thing is spoken as just one thing and uh, it's difficult to take out the elements like this but at least yeah vishwan chakravarti thakur gives one sense that this is from some other distant kalpa like and like if you see why this uh, maitreya muni was hesitant or to talk about this and at the same time vishwan chakravarti is telling this point is kind of in a defense role towards brahma ji like yeah in that sense uh, but then just now you said it ki actually later there is saraswati his own in one sense daughter and concert also yeah but then and that's yeah he, here actually he nothing did he he repented and he rectified himself yeah so so correct. doesn't make uh, anything about this episode so bad in one yeah. sense correct okay. but then i'm saying no in that case saraswati you have to know how she is born is she born as brahma's daughter so in such cases no, she is not. not born as brahma's daughter or she is born you know along with brahma yeah. that is one of the versions she is born along with brahma brahma and saraswati are born and then she is accepted as consort you know like that so that way uh, in such versions there is also a proper justification done that it is not some incestual kind of relationship you know so you ha- you'll have to see those particular versions in such cases and uh, yes one of the famous version of puranas is brahma and saraswati are born together and then she is accepted as you know as his consort like that so pretty like what is the reason of no no temples of brahma here not no no temples of brahma being made yeah, no temples of brahma yeah, being we made we don't see any temple of brahma ji obviously there are few temples here and there but yeah. in general he is not worshiped uh... there is uh, one particular puranic story na some of, uh, some of you know there was one curse to brahma what is that story puranic story there's a particular story about brahma receiving a curse at least i mean it's not coming in my mind that's why brahma yes, ji it, yeah. it is related to this episode curse related to this episode only. yeah this episode only one of the sages curses him yeah but there is connection to this episode only no yeah correct ha hari krishna bol jo ranjay iske saath just a second bro being upset she cursed brahma that uh, you will not be worshiped on the yeah, you will not have any so, so yeah i think that's that's the thing yes this is from the purana you know so something like that the story is that pruja another thing this the sons of brahma this different question that the sons of brahma these all are names or po- positions they are i mean they are personalities and then they appear they do their tasks and they go back so then if you have another set of universe in which these personalities come then same souls are not going to come but same names will be there uh, so same names will be there that is how it is spoken but i was saying the same thing to him that uh, you know what happens when these personalities go back it is said they go back they go back to the spiritual world what happens after that such things are not spoken much you know that so it primarily talks about our creation usually in shastra you know yes prabhu online someone had something yeah prabhu online somebody had a question ah uh, hari krishna bol ji dhananjay ishke sath yeah dhananjay ishke sath prabhu ah uh, that, that brahma is get uh, vishwana chakravarti thakur was telling say uh, in this uh, brahma is not get builder it is in other kalpa yeah but uh, our universe exist Uh, up to the existence of the brahma 100 year is completed this universe only this perverted brahma is there isn't it this this universe only up what, to what the life span of the brahma mm. up to the life span of the brahma our uh, breathing of mahavishnu this universe exists and brahma life span also 100 year yeah yes so what other kalpa bhayata means for the brahma when it is told so then how can 
my question is there other kalpa bheda this episode might be happen what does it mean it means that there is no kalpa for the brahmana no no it means that the chatushloki was spoken not on the first day it was spoken on some of the later days and before chatushloki was spoken brahma ji got attracted to vak and after he heard chatushloki then there is no question of he getting attracted that is how you understand so that is how it is possible that this can happen even within this universe itself but i am saying that only the popular opinion of hearing chatushloki is in the first day that is the version in the first day brahma it's called as brahma kalpa huh? but some say it is also heard in padma kalpa you know which is 51st year first day like that and there are some other versions also so in that case it will be kalpa of this particular universe only this particular brahma only but still it is possible yeah like that yes so you understand prabhu now clear no on when that term was told the kalpa bheda of the brahma so, this uh, different no, no, different comes no, that no. is understandable but in I one kalpa bheda of the this, brahma yeah i said kalpa bheda for what uh, in what context you remember in which context i spoke about kalpa bheda no. i didn't speak about kalpa bheda in this particular context you know like i was talking about uh, you know these other episodes like saraswati and all that so different brahma different kalpa you know like that i mean for this particular kalpa now if you if you take also this nice. version so nice so point is it is some other brahma huh? this this can happen the puranas talk about uh, these episodes like saraswati and all that they are not other brahma means ever. other universe itself is it other universe itself yeah other universe itself yes hari krishna prabhu ji nandan prabhu ji you mean to say it is not mentioned anywhere you are saying right prabhu ji what is not mentioned like uh, brahmas now we were discussing right which brahma and uh, where does after going brahmas and all after their uh, particular period they go back right after that it is not mentioned what exactly they do or whatever it is yeah so, so i mean this is sorry this yeah, is not the it is yeah it is not mentioned i am not saying that uh, i am sarvadnya if it is mentioned somewhere and uh, if that thing is uh, brought forth we accept any bona fide pramana but the primary scriptures which speak about this like brahma samhita uh, like uh, bhagavat puran or like padma puran speaks about it a uh, creation is spoken in some aspect of skanda puran or uh, you know sandarbhas talk about it or uh, baldev vidyabhushan talks some aspects in vedanta so at least there it's not mentioned <laughs> you know so apart from this if somewhere it is mentioned we yes we are happy to accept that praman yeah but it is not so much discussed at least those who are learned devotees in our sampraday i even checked with some them and they are quite learned in many many aspect of our uh, siddhanta so even they were saying these things are not mentioned anyway at least they didn't come across you know so that is how i made that statement yeah it's better to follow our own bhagavatam and go ahead that's all you need yeah yeah question. exactly we take the bhagavatam's version and go ahead yeah. yes. yes anything else Prabhuji, uh, you said about uh, every manvantar, uh, there is Manu and uh, there is uh, their descendants and Indra and Saptarishi. So, manvantar avatar is actually, is it uh, manvantar avatar, the avatar different from Manu? Every is uh, Maharaj Manu? So, uh, Manu Maharaj is not manvantar avatar, is it manvantar avatar is different? Oh, of course it is different. Manu is the... presiding personality who rules that particular manvantar avatar is lord's incarnation like yajna is the manvantar avatar for swayambhav manvantar like that ajita is for chakshusha manvantar vamana is for vaivasvat manvantar lord hari is for the fourth manvantar like that so manvantar avatar are lord's forms prabhu okay <clears throat>
Yeah. How to define Brahma's back if he has four heads? <laughs> See, torso, torso is one. <laughs> he has only four heads. <laughs> okay. But the torso, the part below the neck is only one. <laughs> okay. So his head, which is front, is called as Purva. Huh? Then this second, you go clockwise then. This is called as Dakshina. This is Paschima. And this is Uttara. So like that Purva, Dakshina and so he only that part is four sets. Below that is completely one set only. So that's why there is back. <laughs> okay. I think we should go ahead. <laughs> okay, Prabhu, it's clear, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, text 34. Now different creation that is happening by Brahma. So we can go fast here now. It's just what all different creations like four Vedas, four Ashramas, all this is spoken. Tada Chiddhaya Tahasrashtur Veda Asanschatur Mukhad Katham Sraksham Yaham Lokan Samavetan Yathapura Once upon a time when Brahma was thinking how to create the worlds as in the past millennium, the four Vedas, which contain all varieties of knowledge, became manifested from his four mouths. Mm. Yes. So, uh, this particular thing is being spoken to tell that although that Vak episode was just described, but you please know how Brahma is so powerful. Huh? So, let us leave that Vak episode behind and understand how he is Tejiyasa. In order to speak that, this section is spoken. Krishna Chakravarti says clearly how he's about his body is made up of all Vedas. Huh? Everything, all Vedic knowledge is coming out of his mouth. That's the purpose for which this section is spoken. Okay. So Prabhupada, that's why also he begins with this point huh? that Brahma was uh, third line. Brahma is powerful by dint of his devotional service unto the Lord. And the Lord is always ready to forgive his devotee. If by chance he falls down from the noble path of devotional service. Huh? So whatever, first thing is Teji Asam, Dosha Yana. Uh, Brahma is first of all very, very powerful. So there is no Dosha Buddhi to be done in him. And second, Prabhupada also brings up this wonderful point that Lord is ready to forgive his devotee. Uh, because Brahmaji repented, understood, even gave up his, that bhava, that mentality completely. Uh, so Lord forgave him and empowered him again to, you know, create all these wonderful things which he is creating. Uh, like that, like Prabhupada quotes this 11th canto. Svabadamulam bhajata priyasya tyaktanya bhavasya hari paresha vikarma yachot paditam kachinchit dhunoti sarvam ridhisan niveshta. Uh, even though a devotee uh, may sometimes fall to some vikarma, uh, kathanchit, but Lord dhunoti sarvam ridhisan niveshta, uh, if he is sincerely repentant and takes to the continues to render devotional service, Krishna will uh, wash away all that. Dhunoti sarvam ridhisanya vishta. Uh, like that. So that's the nature of Lord. He's extremely forgiving. Uh, like that. Especially, Prabhupada says that, uh, I mean, like that verse also says that, samyat vyavasito hi saha. That uh, if somebody is falling due to uh, accidental fall down, incidental fall down. Huh? Shridhar Swami, Jeev Goswami speak on that verse. Uh, how does it start? Apichet Sudurachado, Bajate Mamananya Bhak, Sadhureva Samantavya, Samyak Vyavasito, he said. Huh? Shridhar Swami, Shilabal Dev, as well as Jeev Goswami, who comments on this verse in Sandarbhas, they all say that this is for Akasmik Patana. Huh? Akasmik Patana, incidental fall down. Huh? This is not for some uh, very pre-planned, you know, desired and very, you know, sort of uh, predetermined fall down, not for that. But this is because of some uh, particular weakness, incidentally, some devotee falls and then he, Samyak Vyavasito, he again reinstates himself with full sincerity and repentance. Sadhu Reva Samanta, usko sadhu hi manna chahiye, sadhu hi manna chahiye usko. Like that. So that nature of Lord's being uh, forgi uh, forgiving, 
uh, is highlighted also by Prabhupada. So that's why in this case, Brahmaji is also forgiven, uh, even if we take that aspect as Brahmaji's mistake or like that. But then Lord is forgiving and he's empowering him to do this amazing task of creation, which is coming up like that. Brahma was saved by the mercy of the Lord with a little punishment. What is that punishment? Giving up that body, that bhavatya, huh? like that. But by the grace of the Lord, he did not lose his prestige as the great Brahma. So that is the point. So what all he created then after that is spoken. Chatur hotram karma tantram upaveda nayai saha dharmasya padas chatvaras Yes. The four kinds of paraphernalia for conducting the fire sacrifice became manifest. The performer, the chanter, the offerer, the fire, and the action performed in terms of the supplementary way. Also, the four principles of religiosity, truth, austerity, mercy, and cleanliness, and the duties in the four social orders all became manifest. Yeah. So he manifest, he's manifesting all that now is needed to live a life of like an Aryan, uh, like a civilized life. Chatur Hotram, uh, the activities, functions of four kinds of priests, Hota, Udgata, Advaryu, Brahma, all four of them, Chatur Hotram, Karma Tantram, uh, all different kinds of sacrifices. Now, each one of these words will be expanded in further verses. Okay. Upaveda Nayai Saha, Upavedas, uh, four Upavedas are famous, Sthapatya Ved, Ayurved, Gandharva Ved, and Dhanurved. These are Upavedas. Uh, like that, Nayai Hi Saha, Nayai, these are logical scriptures. Uh, Vamshidhar says, Vamshidhar is one of the Acharyas who comments. He says that this means six systems of philosophy, Nayai Hi. Uh, uh, all the conclusions were already brought forth by Brahma. Later, Vyasadeva's disciple only take those conclusions and make into a different school of thought. Huh? But all Nyaya, Vaisheshik, Mimans, Vedans, Sankhya, Yoga, everything, all those conclusions were brought forth by him. Huh? So that is Nayai Hisa. Dharmasya Pada Chatvara, the four pillars of religion, four legs of religion, huh? Satyam, Shaucham, huh? Daya, Tapas, all that. Tathaiva Ashrama, Vrittayaha, and also the duties of all the ashramas, Brahmachari, Grast, Vanaprastha, Sanyas, all these were created by Brahmaji. Uh, so these are all for leading a life of an Aryan, Prabhupada says, progressive human being. Vidura Uvacha, Savai Vishwa Srija Misho, Vedadin Mukhato Srijat, Yadyadena Srijat Devaha, Tanme Bruhi Tapodhana, Vidya said, O oh great sage, whose only wealth is penance, kindly explain to me how and with whose help Brahma established the Vedic knowledge which emanated from his mouth. Maitre Uvacha Rigyajo Samar Sam Athar Vakyan Vedan Purva Dibhir Mukhaihi Tastramijam Stuti Stomam Ayash Chittam Vyadhat Kramat Maitreya said, beginning from the front face of Brahma, gradually the four Vedas, Rik, Yajur, Sam, and Atharva, became manifest. Thereafter, Vedic hymns, which had not been pronounced before, priestly rituals, the subject matters of the recitation, and transcendental activities were all established one after another. Yeah. So from his four mouths. Huh? So now this is talking about Chatur Hotram. Okay. Chatur Hotram, especially that aspect is being spoken. Because... The duties of the four priests are mentioned in four Vedas, Hota, uh, Udgata, and then Brahma and uh, the Advaryu. They all correspond to Ruksama, Yaju, Atharva. Uh, their duties are mentioned. So that's how, beginning from the Purva, Purva Devi Mukhai, from the front mouth of Brahma, Rig, Rig Veda came, then from the right, Yaju, behind Sama, and then this Uttara, Atharva. Like that, all the Vedas were created. Also, what was created was Shastram, Ijam, Stuti, Stomam. Uh, so these are actually the topics of Rig, Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, 
samaved and atharvaved uh, shastram the stotras are talked in rigveda samhitas ijja how to perform the worship sacrifices this stand is talked this thing is talked in yajur veda stuti stomam how to sing uh, very beautiful samaved you have heard sometimes samaved very beautiful singing ha u ha like that it goes you know samavedas are brahat sam very beautiful uh, singing uh, stuti stomam and prayaschittam is in atharva veda uh, finally the mistakes and begging forgiveness for that so that is prayaschittam so four vedas and the topics of four vedas that is spoken in this particular chatur hotram okay so now next verse will talk about upaveda ayurvedam dhanurvedam gandhar okay ayurvedam dhanurvedam gandharvam vedam atmanah sthapatyam cha srijadvedam pramat purva dibhir mukhai he also created all material science military art musical art and architectural science all of the veda all from the vedas they all emanated from one up to another beginning from the front face so beginning from front face ayurved dhanurved gandharva ved and again sthapatya ved all this came uh, out of brahma ji's mouth propad says spiritual knowledge is the main topic of vedas third line uh, but to help the human being spiritual pursuit of knowledge the other information as above mentioned forms necessary branches of vedic knowledge so veda word means knowledge everything is there in vedas uh, all uh, material knowledge spiritual knowledge everything is there within the vedas of course now most of this knowledge is lost uh, so that's how even in upavedas and all that the original upaveda ayurveda they are not there some other books are there like charak samhita and all which are based upon the original ayurveda scriptures and all that charak samhita vakbhat samhita and such things you know so same way with other vedas also jeev goswami says in sandarbhas that only 6% of vedas are available 94% are lost <laughs> he gives the calculation also that you know. itihas puranani itihas puranani panchamam vedam ishwarah sarvebhya eva vaktrebhya sarvebhya eva then he created the fifth ved the puranas and the his, histories from all his mouths since he could see all the past present and future yes so then he created the fifth veda the puranas and the histories huh? that is itihas and puranas so they are also created in the beginning only right they are only written down by brahma uh, by vyasadev in the beginning of kali yuga but they are created before only they are also coming from brahma's mouth only huh? there is a big discussion on this by shilajeev goswami in tatva sandarbh that how vedas and puranas have the equal authority huh? not that only four vedas are shruti and the puranas are smriti so less authoritative no he talks about this particular aspect very detailed there you know talking about how the the verses of bhagavat and and verses of itihasas also come in the same form exact form like the way the vedas come and all that so itihas puranani panchamam vedam ishwarah so these itihasas and puranas came out from all the mouths why because they are conclusions of all the vedas sarvebhya eva vaktrebhya uh, that is commented by uh, acharyas because they are explanation of all the vedas sarva veda vivaran rupatvat uh, sare ved ka vivaran hai ye itihas puran isliye sare mukho se bahar aaye you know like that he says sasrije sarva darshana okay shoda shukta purva vaktrat purushagnishtuta vatha अग्निस्तोमा 
vajapeja and goshava sacrifices were manifested from the eastern mouth of brahma yeah so now these are all karma tantram huh? that original verse talk chatur hotram karma tantram so ye karma tantra ki baat ho rahi the various details of sacrifices and the sacrifices huh? so purva from the eastern mouth came out this sacrifices like shodashi and uktha then agnishtom came from the southern mouth and then uh, atiratra and such sacrifices stoma yajna they came from the behind the western mouth and finally vajapeya and gomeda yagyas and they came from the uttar like vidyadanam tap satyam dharmasyeti padani cha ashramanscha yatha sankhyam asrjat sahavritti bhi education charity penance and truth are said to be the four legs of religion and to learn this religion there are four spiritual orders of life along with different classifications of castes according to vocations brahma created all these in a systematic order yeah so now this is talking about dharmasya pada uh, the pillars of the legs of religion so vidya danam tapah satyam uh, these four are considered the four pillars of religion sometimes you also hear satyam shaucham uh, tapah uh, and uh, satya shaucham tapah mercy daya yeah these are also said to be the four right in 12th canto of bhagavatam there is another version of uh, the four pillars of religion uh, there uh, in 12th canto satyam daya tapo danam are said satya daya tapo but danam is said huh? so all these words have uh, meanings which are very specific and that's how they can be connected to each other huh? so prabhupad takes the plain meaning vidya danam he takes as education and charity huh? straight away like that while uh, so in that way he connects this to four ashramas huh? vidya is for brahmacharya ashram danam for grahastha tapah for varnaprastha and satyam for sanyasi to preach the absolute truth that's how prabhupad gives the meaning but there is another meaning also which uh, other acharyas have given like vishwanath chakravarti jeev goswami also where he says that vidya here basically means the spiritual knowledge and spiritual knowledge is the one which causes the purity so vidya can be equated with shaucham here he says huh? vidya corresponds to shaucham like that he says and then danam corresponds to daya because the best charity you can offer to somebody is if you give him abhay dan you know if you give him you know full protection like that so that's how danam and daya are the same best dan jo hai wo kya hai abhay dan so that daya aspect can be equated with danam like that or danam can also mean shaucham ha huh? kyunki dana ka ek dhatu hai da means to give another da means to purify da shodhane shodhan matlab shuddha karna and da means dane also like that so in sanskrit words have so many different meanings and if one doesn't understand then one may feel like are kya itne varjan bole ja rahe alag alag so but point is yes acharyas do reconcile a virodha finally he says are kuch virodh nahi hai kahin a virodha complete that so anyway prabhupad gives the plain meanings and he connects it very nicely to four spiritual orders like brahmacharya grahastha vanaprast that finally he says the combined actions of all members of society make the whole situation favorable for the fulfillment of the mission of human life huh? the beginning of this social institution is based on education meant for purifying the human being of animal problems so it all begins with vidya huh? if there is no vidya only and then further things become very difficult to achieve like that so that's why vidya is very important proper education should be there first the highest purificatory process is knowledge of supreme personality of godhead the purest of the pure see basically he is referring to that vidya's meaning at shaucham huh? because if you read commentary then you get it what is he saying he is connecting vidya and shaucham otherwise it will not strike why he is uh, bringing up that point savitram prajapatyancha brahmam chatha brahat tatha varta sanchaya shalina siloncha iti vaigrahe 
then the thread ceremony for the twice born was inaugurated as were the rules to be followed for the at least one year after acceptance of the vedas rules for observing complete abstinence from sex life vocations in terms of vedic injunctions various professional duties in household life and the method of, of the method of maintaining a livelihood without anyone's cooperation by picking up rejected grains yeah so now four ashramas are being described huh? four ashramas in that this verse is describing brahmacharya and grahastha next verse will describe vanaprastha and sanyas so there are four types of brahmacharis and four types of grahasthas they are being spoken here so what are they savitram uh, savitram is a brahmachari who practices brahmacharya uh, after getting the upanayanam till the time he learns gayatri huh? so that is three nights within three nights he is taught the full meaning of gayatri like that so this he follows brahmacharya for three days <laughs> so that is savitra uh, brahmachari then he goes and marries like that savitram that is known as savitram brahmacharya uh, three nights three days three nights uh, you know he follows the brahmacharya and then he is uh, go is ready to go on and get married then uh, prajapatyam is a brahmacharya which is followed for one year huh? one stays with guru and follows the uh, seva does the seva of guru and all that and he follows one year samvatsar paryantam that is prajapatya one year he follows brahmacharya and then he goes and gets married huh? something like whatever those days btg <laughs> initial days <laughs> right brahmachari training before grastashram <laughs> btg they used to say samvatsar paryantam uh, prajapat or vijayadwaj tirth says this can also refer to somebody leading a substantial life in ashrama and then joining grastashram like he says dwadash varsha paryantam 12 years if one follows brahmacharya and then goes and gets married that is prajapatya brahmacharya <laughs> he says that also known as upakurvan right then uh, brahmam is ved grahan paryantam brahmacharya jo ved grahan paryantam till the time you learn all the vidya from guru right from the time he comes to gurukul 5 all the way he learns entire vedic knowledge uh, up to 25 sometimes up to 20 also it is spoken so that brahmacharya is brahma uh, that is the type of brahmacharya is called as brahma and the final one is maran paryantam this was veda grahan paryantam the final one is maran paryantam one is a brahmachari till the last moment of his life so that is called as brahat also known as naishthika brahmacharya uh, this way so these are the typical traditional four types of brahmachari right so upakurvan brahmacharya that we talk that is often compared to prajapatya or brahma usually speaking and naishthika is brahat surely you know so this is brahmacharya varta sanchaya shalina shiloncha these are the four ways a grahastha can uh, live sustain his life uh, these are the uh, occupations of a grahastha how he lives uh, so in this varta means anishiddha krishi adi vritti uh, aisa kuch uh, krishi adi upajivika karna uh, like you have your standard varnashrama duty based on your varna you accept a certain living like agriculture huh? or like business that is called as varta you live by that particular occupation sanchaya is different sanchaya is where you teach something yajanaadi vritti huh? you you don't do that particular thing but you teach it huh? like somebody may teach you know how to do agriculture somebody may teach how to do business huh? so this is yajanam adhyapan so one may not get into that but he does the teaching aspect so that is also called as that is called as sanchaya yajana divritti ha uh, yajana adhyapan all will that come especially if he is a brahmana he may teach the uh, doing sacrifices and all that thing or brahmana may teach other things also like that. sanchaya shalinam is ayachit vritti ha uh, shalinam means one doesn't ask anything ha uh, he lives completely on ayachit vritti whatever people know that okay he is uh, here is a personality and he needs some uh, uh, you know needs whatever so people come and give to him and he is based on that he is not going to beg to anybody 
ayachit vritti ha huh? so if people disciples come and give that's what he accepts otherwise he fasts so that is shalina vritti ha huh? like that vedan deshik used to stay on ayachit vritti you know it is said shiloncha ha huh? and finally shiloncha which is popular you know patit kanisha kanavritti ha huh? wherever the, in the marketplace the grains have fallen ha huh? like that or the farmer has taken his crops and what is remaining there he goes and picks it up and he uh, survives on that that is called as shilonchana vritti huh? so in this way these four kinds of occupations are there for grahasthas varta sanchaya shalina and shilonchana okay i will just take this one more verse and then we will stop last verses maybe 15 minutes or so they will take the remaining so which we will do in the next session ವೈಖಾನಸಾವಾಲಕಿಲ್ಯೋ ಬುಂಬರಾಫೇನ ಪಾವನೆ ನ್ಯಾಸೆ ಕುಟಿಚಕ ಪೂರ್ವ ಬಹ್ವೋದೋ ಹಂಸ ನಿಷ್ಕ್ರಿಯೋ ದೋರ್ ಡಿವಿಜನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಟೈರ್ಡ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆರ್ ದ ವೈಖಾನಸ್ ವೈಕಲ್ಯಸ್ ಅವಡಂಬರಸ್ ಆರ್ ಹಿನೌಸ್ ದೋರ್ ಡಿವಿಜನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹಿನೌಸ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಕುಟಿ ಚಕ್ರಸ್ behaves hamsas and the mixti anishtik all these were manifested from brahma yes so now four ways vanaprasthas live are given and sanyasis four ways how they live are given huh? four kinds of sanyasis four kinds of vanaprastha so vanaprastha first is vaikhanasa huh? they are the vanaprasthas what are these akrishta pachavrittayah huh? they they don't take any things which are cultivated a krishta ha huh? jiska karshan nahi hua hai matlab from the land whatever grows without somebody cultivating it ha huh? some roots fruits are there right they grow on their own nobody has put an, like not like wheat or jowar or something like that no a krishta so they accept such things roots and like that and then on that they sur- survive valakhilya valakhilyas are the ones who once they get some food or grains from another person then the first whatever they had before they give it up to others ha nave anne labdhe when they get the new anna purva sanchita anna tyagina they give up the old one they don't stock anything they got food then they give up the uh, the first whatever the remnants or the prior ones they give it udumbara hmm? udumbara or udumbara who are they they are the ones this is interesting first i mean when they get up in the morning in the direction that they see in that direction whatever fruits have fallen they take that these are udumbaras <laughs> so not that they arrange their bed in such a way that <laughs> you know where maximum fruits are there in that direction as soon as you get up you see oh so many fruits like no they get up and as soon as they get up they see the direction in which they see whatever is there in that drishti path that they accept if it is only some leaves dry leaves that they will accept you know so to such people then it is called naishkarmya huh? they are not working it is said although they might work to go there and fetch that thing and eat but that's called naishkarmya it's not called working you know that way and finally fenapa huh? fenapa ar patitai phaladi bhi jivanta whatever is fallen on the ground on its own only that they will take and they will survive on that these are the four kinds of vanaprasthas sanyasis are also four sanyasis first one is kutichak Uh, so this is famous most of you are aware kutichak is one who makes a kuti uh, stays in an ashram and this person is focused on his uh, sadhan staying in that kuti in that sadhan and propad says in other conversations and there is one bhikshu upanishad uh, one of the 102 upanishad as is called as bhikshu upanishad it tells you all the rules of sanyasis how they should be eating you know this is a famous uh, upanishad which is read by advaitins so it tells you how many morsels you can have in a day as a sanyasi it it tells how many from 1 to 15 that's the maximum count morsels in a day <laughs> like that so depending on whether he's kutichak bahudak bhikshuka upanishad tells about you know all these things 
So we are fortunate that Prabhupada has <laughs> given us <laughs> our set of rules. So that is Kuti Chak. He makes a Kuti and then he's being provided food by his relatives or his acquaintances. And he focuses on his sadhana in the Kuti. Bhavodak, uh, he is the one who gives up uh, you know, his Kuti and he goes to Madhukari, do Madhukari. He takes it, takes from fixed houses, he takes whatever he receives, uh, like that. And his focus is on Jnana, cultivation of Jnana. The first one, Kutichak, can be Karma Pradhan, but this one is Jnana Pradhan. Hamsa is the third, who is very much focused on Jnana aspect. Uh, and uh, Hamsa is the one who travels around, Pari, uh, you know, he's also same as Parivarajakacharya. He travels and he shares the knowledge. He not only just accepts food from others, but he wants to also give them something. So he shares the knowledge of uh, spiritual life that is called as Hamsa. And final is the Param Hamsa or Nishkriya, uh, who is Prapta Tattva, who is enlightened, who is, uh, he has already achieved that goal of his path. And he is uh, having the you know, pure devotion for the Supreme Lord. So that is known as Param Hamsa. And this person doesn't ask anything. He, he is completely uh, ayachit kind of vritti is there in that. So these are the highest uh, transcendentalists. So especially the pure devotees of Lord who stay in this fashion, uh, these uh, are considered to be the paramhamsas. And traditionally, this is how. Like So, okay, fine. We can stop here. Granthraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai.